Howdy everyone, it's me once again, the one and only Killer Dan. And today, I'm still continuing my Disney movie marathon by doing a Disney related video. So, yeah, it's late at night, I mean really late, I just left the laundromats. And the thing is that the one lady that works there, she's an employee or whatever, she owes me like 75 bucks. I mean, what the hell, man? Well, at the very least, I still have a bag of weed at my place, which I'll share with Air Force, I guess. The thing is that with this video, folks, it's something at first I didn't really want to do at all, but I guess I'll do it because it's stupid. It's absurdly stupid. Disney movies are meant for everyone to, to enjoy. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter your what your financial status is, it doesn't matter if you have like a bunch of friends, no friends, a few friends, whatever. Disney films are meant to be enjoyed by everybody, literally everybody, regardless of where you came from or what, and regardless of the skin color you have, it doesn't matter because this is, Disney films are for everyone. But I'm bringing, I'm gonna be bringing up Frozen again. Oh boy, I lost track on how many times I brought this film up, folks. I genuinely do not know how many times I've brought this film up already. Oh boy. Yeah, I brought this up more times I care to count. And of course, folks, and obviously, to be clear here, I got nothing against the studio. Even though, yes, they may have made mistakes in the past. No, co no company is perfect, of course. I even still have the Disney Plus, where I occasionally watch something from there whenever I have the chance. And I still want to go to one of the theme parks whenever I have the opportunity. So, this video is not a critique on them per se. To be more exact, this video is going to be more on, on the critique on a good chunk of the fan base. Not every single fan, but a good chunk of the fan base. Because a lot of these individuals can be rather annoying. I mean, granted, every fan base is guilty of this. That is true. But even some people from their own fan base admitted that the fans themselves can be really annoying be over some something trivial, something they would disagree with, and somehow that alone could lead to an argument among people. And yes, it's it's pretty stupid. It's it's just really. Stupid when you think about it. Because, here's the thing, folks. Many fans of Disney, of these animated features, had accused Frozen, the original one, to be racist because it was supposedly whitewashing. It's obviously not the case, folks. They were just projecting something there when there isn't really a problem. It's a non-existent problem, but they are making it into a problem. Which doesn't need to happen, like, at all. I mean, okay, granted, Disney himself was accused of being anti-Semitic, so this kind of thing isn't anything new. All of this, this entire thing is just assumptions. Nothing but assumptions. And also, they would call other fans racist just because they might like Elsa over another character. Just because of the color of her skin. And I mean, really, just because... They might like a character like Elsa over another character. It doesn't mean it's racial motivated. It could mean maybe the character herself might be more well-rounded. Maybe the film is better delivered and whatnot. I'm not over here going to try to convince people to like one movie over the other. A lot of people are going to have a lot of favorite movies. That's perfectly fine. But don't assume anything is what I'm saying. Just because... One person likes one movie over the other doesn't necessarily mean it's inherently racist. No, it depends on the motivation behind liking one movie over the other. And then on top of that, the place where they live, Arendelle, it doesn't even exist. Like, at all, it's, it's a fictional place with fictional characters. I mean, yes, it was, it was definitely inspired by a real-life culture kind of thing. That is true. It was definitely inspired by... A certain culture, that is true, sure. But that doesn't mean, that alone doesn't mean it's racist. No. 
If anything, yeah, they're trying to claim that just because these characters are light skinned, they means they're Caucasian. I mean, okay, one thing I had to make perfectly clear, clear is that Elsa and Anna aren't Caucasian. And even if they were, you soon assume that it's racist. Not every single movie out there that has white characters doesn't mean it's racist. Not every single film needs to deal with racism. I mean, yeah, you could always use that as a source of conflict, drama, sure. But not every single movie with these types of characters need to be about racism. And it's racist to assume that every white person is racist. That's nonsensical. Technically speaking, these characters are Norwegian, as in they're from Norway, born and raised. And at the end of the day, who gives a shit what color they are? It shouldn't matter because at the end of the day, the only thing I want is a good story, a good plot. Really? From my point of view, folks, it just comes off like they're only saying this that Frozen is whitewashing just because of the color of the skin. Which, like I said a moment ago, that in itself is racist because you can't assume every light skinned character is going to be automatically be hating on somebody else from a different culture. You shouldn't assume. You should not assume at all. And of course, when you think about it, if you're just going to assume something, you're going to make an ass out of yourself. Of course, if you want diversity, fine, I'm all for that. But you're gonna have to include them too, you know. You realize that? You have to include everybody. Including everybody literally means include including everybody. Including the whites. They have to be a part of it too because the whole diversity bit. Of course, I don't mind having diversity in a story. If you want that to be part of the plot, be my guest. If you come up with an interesting story where it will come across various characters with maybe having this big grand adventure where like a number of characters will actually team up with each other or do something against the villains or whatever, sure, be my guess. That would be a great message, having characters from various backgrounds teaming up to fight the bigger threat. That would be lovely, really. But nobody would have said anything if all these characters were Japanese. Yeah, if they were all from Japan, or taking place in Japan, I bet you that nobody would have said anything. Like, at all. Uh, that's guaranteed, not nobody would have complained, like, ever. So, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. No, I don't really need to say this, but I'm gonna just point out, so to be clear, I'm not making any excuses for the actual racist White people, yes, that unfortunately is a part of reality, but you can't assume that all of them are like that. No, no, that's, you shouldn't assume that. Don't make an ass out of yourself. But also look at what the Japanese Imperial Army wanted to do. They were pretty much an empire. They basically had wanted, they were planning to take over all of Asia. And you mean to tell me that during that period of time, none of them were, none of the Japanese were racist. Not all of them, of course, but I'm pretty sure that there were a good number of them who were racist. And yes, there was a period of time where they didn't like, well, okay, some of them anyway, didn't like the Chinese. Oh yes, speaking of which, let's just say that there was a pretty gruesome incident that did occur, folks, between the Japanese and the Chinese. Obviously, I'm not going to blame every Japanese for, had a, for what had occurred, obviously. They're not responsible for every bad thing that their country and people had done, of course, so I'll throw that out the way. But this massacre had occurred over a period of six weeks, starting on December 13th of 1930. Seven. So, yeah. This was definitely a gruesome time, at least for the Chinese anyway. The day that the Japanese had captured this area during this period of time, the soldiers of the Imperial Japanese Army had murdered, disarmed, uh, disarmed and whatnot, 
just anybody of the Japanese citizens. And let's just say they murdered quite a few, quite a bit of people, and I do mean a lot. All in the name of their own nation and whatnot, trying to basically send off a certain message, of course. So, yeah, but the thing is that, what makes this even more gruesome is that, since most of the Japanese military records on the killing were actually kept secret or destroyed sometime after, the thing is that after the surrender of Japan in 1945, any person that wanted to have some sort of, you know, do like a history lesson on this specific event, they have some inaccurate information, so it became right out difficult to actually do any sort of history lesson on that. And since the country was trying to keep this event hidden, but a lot of people of this are fully aware of what occurred. So, if you're willing to not blame not every single Japanese, is like this, which you shouldn't, of course. Not all of them are like this, but okay, you can give them the, you can give the Japanese nation the benefit of the doubt. But nobody can do the same thing in return for the Caucasian people. That doesn't make any sense. German individual is Nazi. Yes, there were a lot of Nazis who were Germans. That's true, but that doesn't necessarily mean every single one of them is like this. You shouldn't judge. The entire basket just because there's some few bad eggs inside of it. However that phrase goes, you know what I'm talking about. So, yeah. And, um, of course, there was even some... There was even quite a bit of German people who were displeased with this kind of a thing. Of course. But, I'm just going to use this as an example. You shouldn't judge the entire group just because of uh, a few bad seeds. Throw in that group, of course. I never think because he only wanted only a specific group of people to be part of his team, so to speak. Because he viewed this group of people to be superior than much many others, of course. So if anything is a political control that he had for the German people and no one else. And he was gonna be under Alfred Hitler's ruling, of course. And yeah, that unfortunately is a thing. Only he viewed his political perspective to be the only absolute. Yes, this is unfortunately a part of history, sure, it, it will always be a part of history, and you can always learn from other people's mistakes, so you won't, you know, do them yourself. So, this is pretty dark subject matter, and I'm bringing up, folks. So, when you think about it, this just comes people who made Frozen, the first one, have, of course had to do a lot of research. Which you have to because it's a film. So, case in point, the clothing alone, the clothing alone to give away of, of where this movie takes place. So, when you think about it, if you're wondering where a film is supposed to take place, just look at the outfits. The wardrobe should be a clear indication of the time period. And this is supposed to take place in a certain period in Norway. Just look at the outfits. You can look it up yourself if you want. Here's some of the traditional uniforms worn by women and men and whatnot that they would wear. You can see, you can obviously tell it looks awfully similar to what Anna had been wearing through the entire film. This alone gives you gives it away of what is supposed to take place in, like what country and what specific time period of that very country. So. Of course, it's going to be different compared to nowadays. Isn't obviously every country around the world is going to be different in the modern day age compared to its past. So you do have to take that to uh, in mind because you know things do change. Things do change the uh, the way of you know making sort of practices, sort of policies of the government or whatnot. And that's the thing. Of course, there's still some individuals who want to cling on to the past, whether because it's family gatherings, religious reasons, so on and so forth. But, point being, like I said a moment ago, when it comes to making a movie, you do have to do some research anyway, because you do have to gather some material to make the script, and the script for Frozen was rewritten 
uh, uh, so many times. They lost count on how many times they have rewritten the script. So, well, I guess you can see why, because the movie was stuck in limbo for nearly 100 years. 75 years to be exact. Walt Disney himself had wanted to do this film himself, but never could. I've actually discussed this in a separate video for anyone that wants to know. But, anyway, point being is that you do have to do some sort of research for this kind of a movie, or any kind of a movie, really. Regardless of genre, regardless of what type of a movie, you do have to do some research so you can have more of an accurate storyline with characters. And like I was saying before, at the end of the day, I, I just want care. I just want a good story, really. If the characters are all going to be from one race or multiple races, multiple countries, or just simply take place in one area, at the end of the day, all I really care about is the story. Plot, theme and how it's executed. So, storytelling is important. One of my favorite comic book series is Sandman. And that, right there, has a great overall plot. It's one of the best comics out there. And it was written by one of my personal favorite authors, this guy right here, folks. And he knows how to strategize a story. The best way to tell a good story is through the eyes of people and whatnot. Why there's nothing really wrong with having like a complex moral lesson on social commentary and whatnot, but stories are about people going through experience of life, and you can do that right here too. What I'm looking for is the intent. What's the intention of the film? What what's the idea behind? the movie, what's the idea behind the characters, so on and so forth. This type of stuff is what I look for. And does it fit in the overall narrative? What's the idea here? What's the concept? Yeah, I have to think about the the premise itself down to its very core. And does it succeed in it, what I was trying to do? Of course, I'm also talking about the fact that does it execute its theme? well its ideas is the execution well stuff like this is what i'm talking about i want to look at the stuff of course what's the what is the intent behind this concept these ideas what are they going for exactly you know this type of stuff i would just want to think about while i'm watching the movie of course if you want to have a more proper judgment you have to make sure you get it right of course it's fine to give a certain movie constructive criticism, as long as it's actually constructive. You, can't just, you cannot just bash a movie and call it constructive, but you have to have an actual point to the, mo to the criticism that you give into the movie. So yeah, just trying to point that out, folks. You, you'd think that'd be some of the most obvious thing, but no. no it's for, for some odd reason, they don't bring up some critiques if you have for the film. It just seems really odd to me. The Spanish Empire, which became one of the largest empires in human history. And let's just say they, co they definitely conquered a lot of territory. One of which was, of course, Mexico, Cuba, and even the Philippines, just to name a few. And of course, they want to go all over the place and try to conquer as much land as they want to. Mostly because of the fact, hey, God told me to, therefore I should listen. Well, it's, in reality, it just comes off like it's just an excuse to mistreat people, which they did. They definitely discriminate against those who were non-Spanish speaking, Spanish as in Spaniard to be more specific. And yeah, and definitely push the whole thing with religion onto other people. Because they believe the only way you're going to live your life, if you're... Uh, a religious person, which of course is, is nonsensical because concerning the fact you can be an atheist and be a good person. But it's also how the Philippines had their religion, specifically the Catholic religion to be more precise here, to be in their culture. If you're wondering where that came from, there you go. And of course, the Philippines pretty, had it pretty hard, which so did a lot of other people of course. But what I'm, what I'm talking about is that there were definitely taken over twice, once by the Spanish Empire and again by the 
Japanese Empire at the time, of course. Both times they were basically saved by the Americans. Funny how a lot of people don't want to bring that up. Just blame white people for every little thing. Okay, that's not fair at all. But trying to say that they're trying to use religion as a way to just try to be trying to act like an authority figure, so to speak. Also, okay, this comes out as no surprise, really, but the homosexuals, yeah, the LGBT community, not that they had a community back in the day, but point being, they were actually discriminated against by the Spanish Empire because, you guessed it, oh, God said so. It's between a man and a woman, yada, yada, yada. All the cliche dialogue, it's between, it, it was between animus. Eve, not Adam and Steve, yada, 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 all the cliche arguments that you heard before. Basically, what's going on with that. So, of course, some Philippines, not all, but some of the Philippines at, at that time, even to this very day, have a negative point of view when it comes to that kind of a thing. When it comes to the LGBT community, unfortunately, that's still a thing to this very day. But, just trying to get to the root of the problem is that, the thing is that a lot of countries... All right, let's be honest here. All the countries in the entire world, every state, every island, every country in the entire world has blood in its hands. Every country is guilty of doing something. Is all I'm saying. They're all guilty of doing something. I'm not excusing anything. Of course, things do happen. Human error has always been a thing, a part of history. It's always going to be there, unfortunately. So I'm aware of the fact that Columbus had... Well, risen quite a bit of eyebrows over the years. He has got a lot of controversy because they said he had, had done some unspeakable things and whatnot. And, yeah, digging some old history there. But the thing is that the Spanish Empire had done a lot worse. I mean, I, not that I'm trying to justify anything, but they're, kind of, they're just as racist and whatnot. They were, did some speak about things, they did it more, and they did it longer. And they also conquered more land as well. So whatever Columbus, whatever bad thing Columbus has done, the Spanish Empire had done a lot, and I do mean a lot worse compared to him. So keep that in mind. But no, 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 no. Nobody would bring that up because they don't want... To make the church, the Christians, look bad. They sure don't mind making everyone else look bad. Yeah, that really doesn't really hold up when you actually think about it. None of this has anything to do with Frozen. When you think about it, this has nothing to do with the animated film. Come on. But the thing is that blaming one group for all the bad things... In society is of course completely wrong and yeah this is just a big fat no-no folks when you actually consider how there's, there's bad people and there's good people everywhere no matter where you go there's gonna be a good or bad person no matter where you go to unfortunately there's gonna be bad people obviously but yeah that seems like the most obvious thing you can point out but it just seems like a lot of people don't really have the common sense really like at all, but yeah, it is what it is, I guess you can say. Oh uh, boy, yeah, still some things I want to talk about, and they're just really, really absurdly stupid. Oh boy, another absurdly, unintentionally funny, stupid thing is that, yeah, another thing they want to bring up is that there's a lack of diversity, diverse people from other countries because. Again, just judging from the fact that all these characters are the same color of skin. I mean, uh, okay. So, that's just nonsensical right off the bat, because, again, do I have to bring up the fact again that this movie takes place in Norway? So, of course, there's going to be a certain look of people that's going to be around this place. And, yeah. And I have to bring up, oh boy, I'm bringing this up again. I keep bringing this up. I mean, come on. I mean, seriously, just look at the surroundings of the film. Look all around it. Even the locations tell you that it's Norwegian. Going back to what I mentioned earlier, when you're making a movie, you have to study, you have to do some research so that the film itself can come out 
believable. So of course the characters are going to look, at least the vast majority of them anyway, are going to look like a certain type of color. And here's one thing I never understood either. How's it about, whenever there's like a bad guy character that's racist, with a, a villain type character that's, you know, homophobic, or prejudged, or that's, uh, you know, that's close-minded, it's always a white guy. It's always a white woman, it's always someone of Caucasian that's the villain in that regard. You mean to tell me the only people in the entire world that's like this are Caucasians? I highly doubt that. I mean, I'm not saying that some of them are like that. I know some of them are, but you can't say that every single time, sometimes, sometimes that whenever a bigot happens, it's always a, that person? I don't think so. Demonizing anybody from any race is, of course, a bad thing, of course. And also, you mean to tell me there's like so many Chinese people out in China and not a single one is racist? I'm sure there's quite a few that are. Not to say all of them are like that, obviously. There's quite a few who are welcoming to other people from other cultures. And half of China is communist. Does this mean every single one of them is like that? Of course not. Goes back to what I just said way earlier. Just because some people from a certain group is bad, does not speak for the entire group itself. There's good and bad people in every single group. So there's... Uh, there's something to think about right there, so, yeah, it's just something that I wanted to bring up, and the, f the weird thing is that it, none of this, absolutely none of this has to do with Frozen. This stopped being about Frozen a long time ago. Anything about it? stopped being about Frozen a long time ago, here, several years later, and they did introduce a bit more different characters from other backgrounds and whatnot, and even within the context of the film, it still made sense because it had something to do with Elsa's powers, where she had to come from, well, powers specifically, the parents, and the whole thing with the Enchanted Forest. Like that is fine because having diversity just for its own sake. This feels like it's, it feels like it's phoned in. You have to have it there for the story of purposes, and not be there just just because. Of course, it still goes into the fact that you know the culture and one of Norway had some inspira uh, was placed as inspiration, I guess you can say. But bottom line is that one thing you can you can definitely learn is that storytelling is something. That everyone can get by. Stories help to convey information towards anybody, anywhere, and any time. A well-told story can definitely be something as well done as well. Of course, if you can get a good story across, it wouldn't really matter where they came from. I mean, sure, you find diversity. Sure, make sure the Make sure you're going to come up with a good story where it uh, combines everybody's talents in some sort of way, I guess. The game that I brought up multiple times before is, of course, Dragon Age Inquisition, which was also accused of whitewashing, which was never the case. But I'm bringing it up because, yeah, a part of that is why I bring it up, but also because uh, that game does have characters from various backgrounds with their unique skills and powers or spells or whatever you want to call it, fighting abilities and whatnot. And everybody's from different various backgrounds, villages or what have you. Yeah, that game had does have diversity. It does. But the diversity in that game it never felt forced. It never felt like it was cheap. It was ne it felt like it was never done just for the sake of it. It served a purpose. The diversity itself served a purpose. That everybody can get along, be united as one, as one nation, and regardless of your background, we all gonna come together and fight the bigger threat. So that's a pretty good message you can give off to the audiences. So, like I always said, story is almost it's always important. A good plot is always important. Great characters are always important, of course. All right, folks. All right, this video has been going on for quite some time already. And I do appreciate anybody's watching this, of course. But this is definitely something I've been meaning to do for quite a while. 
and I just want to bring it up because it's just getting on my, on my nerves. And I guess referring to a thing I said like early on in the video, people are trying to guilt trip you into liking a different character just because you like Elsa or Anna more than a different character than from another movie. Somehow that makes you racist. That doesn't make any sense. Liking those two characters more than some other character, you should not be guilt tripped into liking it. Guilt tripping somebody is a bad way to uh, to save somebody. You trying if you're trying to convey a point of view, then do that. Don't use manipulation. Don't use don't try to play no mind games to trick the other peer person from from one way to another. So. Liking Elsa or liking Anna more than another character in itself isn't racist. My point is, it depends how the story is delivered. It depends on how the character is delivered. And look at the intention. Like I was, that's another thing I brought up before. What's the intent here? What's the context? What's the plot? Who are the characters? Are they delivered in a proper manner? Are they well written? This kind of stuff you do have to think about. I mean, yes, I'm not saying that there aren't any racist Disney fans. There's some there's some bigots in every fan base, unfortunately. There's some homophobic Disney fans. There's some racist Disney fans. That still isn't enough to say that the company of Disney is racist. That, that's not enough to say that the company is homophobic. Those bigots in every fan base, unfortunately. It's not going to take very long to find them. It's and unfortunately the truth of the matter, the sad reality is that there's bigots in every fan base, even in Star Wars, unfortunately. So are those sexist individuals who like to watch the Star Wars movies, does that mean the company of Disney is sexist? No. Does that mean the direct the original director George Lucas is sexist? No. It's just certain fans that are like that, unfortunately. That's the sad truth of it, really. But that alone shouldn't be a determining factor to pass judgment on a company. Or I guess in this case, a movie. So it's just ridiculous, folks. It's just really, really ridiculous. Alright, I should just wrap things up already. Because this, this video has gone long, on long enough. It already has. But I do appreciate anybody for watching my long video. And I guess, yeah, it just came... In, I know in some ways it kind of came off like a history lesson. Any of the other, oh, any of the other things I just brought up earlier about some kinds, I could easily spend the entire video t about talk about any of those things, but I just want to uh, bring you some idea of what I'm talking about because, like I said, this was not about Frozen really, even though this say it's about Frozen, but at the end of the day, it really isn't. If anything, it it, it reveals how they are. If anything, this tells them, this tells you how they are deep down. In some ways, it's just like a, a little confession, so to speak. So, you get down to it, they're projecting, they're adding stuff that's not even there, like, at all. It's ridiculous. It's really, really ridiculous how some fans would do this, of course. And, and even, even if you want to say that they could have done a few certain things better with Frozen 1 and 2, you could say that for, you could say that for practically in every movie. There's some flaws even with, there's some flaws even with the better movies. And it's really, really rare to see a movie that's nearly perfect or could be considered perfect. Like a, a film that be considered a masterpiece or a film that's nearly a masterpiece. That's really, really, really rare to see those kinds of movies. And but yeah, it's just ridiculous. You can make the best movie, but then again, the thing is that you can make the best movie in the world. You can make one of the greatest films of all time, but still have somebody complain about it. I still have someone, you know, just whine about it, about just nitpicking every little aspect of the story, the characters, the themes, the way it was shot, the way it was filmed, the music, the dialogue, you name it. Just nitpick every little thing. Oh boy, and that has happened before, with, even with the popular movies, again like Star Wars for example. Alright folks, alright, I'm just yammering on at this point, yada yada, blah 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 blah. This has been one lengthy video, so 
yeah, thanks anybody, whoever you are. Thank you for uh, having a look. And I hope I didn't piss off too many people. Uh, I tend to have a habit of that. But whatever, whatever. I just wanted to give a. I guess you can think of it as this as a video essay, I guess, if anything. Uh, whatever. Anyway, as always, thanks for watching and take care. Till next time, see ya. Oh yeah. Later. Eh <laughs>